What's up YouTube, I am Matador Philip, and today we're going to talk a little bit about dry brushing. Now, in my last video I went over the process of creating this rifle right here, and I, I briefly touched on the subject of dry brushing this metal texture right here, but I don't think I talked about that quite enough, so I decided I wanted to make a second video just dedicated to dry brushing, because that's the, that's the best part. That's the part that I have the most fun with, and it's the part that helps things look the best. Like, this is what really brings cosplay props to life, so... We can see right here we have another rifle that I've just finished painting. This is actually going to be for my wife Hipster Mermaid, who is going to be cosplaying the Soul Survivor from Fallout 4. So this is going to be just a basic assault rifle. You can see I've already got the, uh, the black and the brown painted in right here. If you want to know a little bit more about that, then you can watch the last video that I put out, which was just covering the basics of creating a cosplay weapon like this. But right now what we're going to talk about is how to get this more realistic, detailed color that we've got going on. You should only need a couple of brushes for this, depending on how many colors you're doing. Make sure that the brushes you get are um, they're very thick bristles, because that works perfect for something like this. You don't want something like this one right here, which is a little softer. This is better for fine detailing. But for what we're doing, these two are going to work a lot better. The really thick, bristly one. So make sure you have a couple of those for this project. And I'm going to be using just metallic acrylic paint. This is very basic stuff. Like, the brand is not particularly important. I don't have one brand of paint that I like better than any other. And I'm also going to be using just generic black acrylic paint. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna start off with this area of the rifle right here, but first things first, we gotta tape it off. We don't have to tape off the whole thing. Just this little area right here, so that I don't get paint where I don't want it. And let's put down a little bit of our silver acrylic paint right there. And now what you're going to want to do is get this brush just slightly wet with the paint. Don't wet it with water or anything else. Remember this is called dry brushing. And just kind of do a few strokes in the paper to get the thickness of that paint off. Basically what you want, what you want is to have just the tip of the brush wet with paint right here. Just the bristles, the very tip of the bristles. And then you're going to very lightly rub the top of the brush against the rifle like this. Now you don't have to worry about creating a specific pattern with it. Remember, part of the, uh, the appeal of the look of this is kind of embracing the randomness of it. Because what you're trying to simulate is weathering of this weapon over time. You're not trying to, you're not trying to create a very specific pattern. You're trying to create the look that says that this gun has been around for a while. In the case of this one, we're basically making a gun from the wasteland, so we're trying to create a gun that's been, it's been through the ringer, it has seen much better days, and you're going to notice that like for this first coat, it's not going to be complete, it's just kind of getting the first layer, and we're going to do this several times, but it doesn't really matter what evenness your strokes are in, it's prob in fact it's probably better if you have a certain amount of roughness to them, and just go over it really roughly the first time just to really simulate the the randomness of just damage and weathering that occurs over time. As time goes on we're going to get a little bit more paint on and create some more dramatic scuff marks and dings on this gun, but you can already see what's going on right now, that it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. It looks like a bit more of a, it looks a little bit more like a gun that has been used before, not just something that came straight off the factory and has just still got the matte black paint going to it, which is just not realistic for the wasteland. It's not the look that we're going for at all. Another really good thing about this type of acrylic paint is that it dries very quickly, so we don't really have to wait long at all to come back to that area again, but for now, let's go ahead and move on to the barrel. Kind of the same thing. Again, you don't have to worry about getting it in too specific a pattern. The, r the more random, the better. It just don't worry too much about the technique of this. Remember, this is just roughly stroking in the colors and the battle damage that's happening right here. It's really important to keep in mind which areas of the gun are likely to have seen more abuse. Basically, any corners or edges are going to have a few more dings and scratches and nicks than the rest of the gun. Just that That's for a variety of reasons. It could be for anything from weathering to you have to really keep in mind where this gun is going to be grabbed and touched because over time that really creates weathering and wear and tear in those particular spaces on the gun. So try to keep in mind the areas that are going to be seeing the most wearing down over time and put a little bit more paint on those areas. Take a quick break now and we're going to see the difference between this side right here 
and this side in which things are starting to look a lot more like the kind of gun that you'd expect to see in Fallout and really the kind of gun you'd expect to see in real life because real life in real life things do not stay perfect like this for very long like especially in a situation like Fallout where you no longer have access to really the same techniques and materials for cleaning guns so that's another thing to keep in mind remember that this weapon really hasn't been it hasn't had the proper servicing that it needs in a very long time okay now this area right here has dried so we're gonna go over it a little bit more roughly we're gonna do some strokes like that just in, in all sorts of different directions again there's no particular method to this in fact the less method you have really the better it'll look so now we bring in this dry brush and again kind of diffuse that in a couple of areas go heavier in some areas than others because again that really brings out the randomness of how things look and the less structure this has to it the more realistic it'll ultimately look right now i'm also using kind of a almost a stippling technique just tapping the brush over and over again on the surface of this gun and uh, that creates a bit more of a diffused effect like um almost a patina on top of the metal and don't use it all over the place just in a couple of places and that's about it for this tutorial so let's take a quick look at the end result here you can see I basically just did the exact same thing that I was just showing you all over the rest of the gun that's really about all there is to it there's not really much else to know at least when dry brushing metal I will create more tutorials so you can have more detailed walkthroughs on how to do things like that but you can see on the wood part of the gun right here, I basically just did the exact same thing, just with black to kind of diffuse the uh, the brightness of the brown that was on there, because it was just really, it had a big sheen to it, and it just didn't look, it was the same thing as the black. It was a little bit too shiny to be in the wasteland. And just a couple other details I put on, you can see I have a bayonet here that I sculpted out of foam, did the exact same dry brushing thing, just with a bit more of a uniform look to it to give it the, uh, the kind of brushed metal look. Then I have a green stripe right here that I painted on afterwards after I did the dry brushing. And then I just did a little bit more dry brushing over that to make it look a bit more worn and weathered. And that is really about it. That is all I did for this prop. So hopefully you found that tutorial useful. Hopefully that was informative to some of you. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like on this video to let me know. And if there's anything that I didn't go over or anything else about this prop that you'd like to know about, please leave me a message in the comments down below and I will answer you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this one. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, adios.